This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris. Welcome to the Photography Guild. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the differences between shooting RAW and shooting JPEG. This can sometimes be a controversial topic between photographers, but for some of us, it's just misunderstood. So let's talk about what it all means. When we hear the term raw, what that is, is it's an image file. And they call it raw because it's raw data. The file has been uninterpreted. It's been unaltered. It's like a digital negative. Now, JPEG is actually a standard method way of compressing photographic images. And JPEG actually stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. And that's the original name of the committee that wrote this standard. And what it does is it just compresses data into a smaller file size. Now, to get that file size smaller, it actually has to throw away some of the data that's been captured when one takes a photo. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of each. One of the pros with RAW is that it allows you to have lots and lots of editing flexibility. Um, There have been many times I can bring a photo back to life that if I had been, I had compressed the file using JPEG, I wouldn't have had enough information to bring the photo back to life. The cons to RAW though is that because it saves all of the data that the sensor captures, it takes up more space on your SD card and it takes up more file space on your computer. Whereas the pros with JPEG is that because you have small file sizes, it doesn't take up a lot of space on your SD card or on your computer, but the con is that you have very limited editing flexibility. But guess what? You can use both technologies. You don't have to choose one or the other. Just choose which way works best for you depending on the project that you're working on. So here are some questions to ask yourself. What are your goals for the project that you're working on? Are these things that you are definitely going to want to print? If that's the case, you may want to consider shooting in RAW. But what if it's just for online viewing? Definitely go JPEG. That's what it was initially designed for, is for web applications. That's why it has the small file size. But ultimately, you have to decide what your technical comfort level is. With RAW, you have to have a camera that offers it. You have to have available storage, both on an SD card and on your um, computer. You have to have the software program that lets you uh, process those files. And you have to have the time and interest to put into learning how to use that software. With JPEG, there's not a lot of muss and fuss. There's a variety of programs and they offer very basic editing. So if you decide you want to play with RAW a little bit, let me show you some of the editing that is available to you. The first thing you can play with is exposure. And in RAW, you many times have a range of about eight f-stops which is amazing now in this photo that I've taken I am I have duplicated it twice because when you shoot in raw it is um, not a degradation type of software you can easily bring it back with just a click to your original format so that's what I did with these tulips the image on the left I blew it out the exposure is as high as you can go and then with just the flick of a slider the image on the right I took it down as low as you can go well you can imagine somewhere in the middle would also be a beautiful shot but when you edit in raw because it's kept all that information you have that kind of control about getting the perfect exposure even if it wasn't taken in the most ideal situation Next, you get to control your white balance, which is the color temperature um, of your photo. Now, when I was taking this photo, it was a very cloudy day, and that's the image you see on the left. 
I wanted some blue to come through as if it were a sunny blue day. So by manipulating the white balance, I was able to change the color temperature just a bit so that I could give the illusion that there was more of a blue sunny day going on then. Next, you can play with your highlights. Now, highlights can be very subtle, but if you are doing a large print of something, they're really important. Now, the image on the left, I rolled um, the highlight slider way off. It's a lovely photo, but if you look at the inside of the tulip there in the center on the top, you can see that I have um, a more pinkish highlight. And then if you look at the image on the right in the same spot you see that those highlights are a little whiter so what that lets you do is when you have images that have a little bit of highlight you can make them pop just a little bit more if you want to now shadows are a really interesting thing to play with when you're shooting raw the reason being is that many times we may shoot something and it almost appears like there is nothing going on in the shadow it appears black and that's because of the, the exposure but one of the things we can do is we can bring things out of the shadows because that information is still there in the file now, in the image on the left, I've totally rolled off the shadow. You can see there's practically none in the green area. But then look on the right, and again, in that green area where there is shadow because of all the leaves, I could really enhance that. So shadow play can go both ways. You may want to have more of a contrast and have your shadows be darker, or if you found that they totally went black on you, but there was some detail you wanted to get, you can bring them back out as well. Then there's the saturation, and that's always fun to play with because if you have a photo that's been overexposed, you really lose the richness in color that many times you want. Now, by saturation, you can really crank that up. Now, the photo on the left, I've rolled it completely off, but then on the right, I have cranked it all the way up, and it's almost turned those tulips into some more of a hot pink kind of thing because the color is so saturated. Again, you don't need to go to the extremes, but it's nice to know that you have that information where you can bring some richness to your photos. And then the last thing I'm going to show you today is the individual colors that you can play with. Um, many times um, in the software, they give you control over five basic colors, the reds, yellows, greens, light blues, dark blues, and purples. So in this image, this is one image, and I just took control of the red hue slider. And all I did was I slid the, the slider from one extreme to the other. So the purple at the top is the far left of the slider, the orange is in the middle, and the yellow is on the far left. Now remember, these tulips were originally red, but by playing with the individual colors, I can just change them uh, with a slide. Now there are many more variables that are available when you shoot in RAW because of that data being there. Um, but these are some of the ones that I use in my own photography. Now for the gear, um, for JPEG really you just need your digital camera and some standard editing software. Usually it even comes with something. But um, you may be using iPhoto or there's lots of other uh, software programs available. If you decide you want to play with RAW, the first thing you have to see is if that is indeed an option with your camera. So you have to check that out first. And then you'll need to probably get a little bit bigger SD card card because those image files are so large it will take up a lot of space on your SD card. You'll want to make sure that you have some file space available on your computer. Be really good about deleting things you don't want and organizing. And then you need to look for the editing software that can handle those raw files. Things like Apple's Aperture or Adobe's Photoshop. See what's available these days. So your assignment is if you can, try playing with RAW a little bit. See if you enjoy having the flexibility that all that additional information gives you.
And as always, make sure that you share your photos. Just post them to the Photography Guild on Flickr. And to navigate there, you can just go to our website, go to the Photography Guild homepage, and we'll get you there. For more information on this episode, go to our website and visit the Photography Guild show notes. Also, if you have any questions or ideas, send us an email. Thanks for watching.